we were talking earlier uh, before the show began that okay uh, is it just to get money education is it just for us to make ends meet or does it have something different or something extra that it adds to that add, that education adds to us let's take for instance purification of the mind that is just as you say okay before you get gold it has to go through purification and you come out you come out like oh yeah refined refined and things like that does education do that actually education refines the mind because okay like when i was in the university one of my lecturers will always say um this course will twist your mind mm. you know so that's what education does to you it twists your mind it reframes your mind, reframes your your thinking, and at the end of the day, you come out a refined product. So yes, throughout the years you are within a formal institution, you are receiving some form of training that is changing the mind, changing the way you perceive the world, changing the way you perceive uh, things around you, making you more analytical in your approach to things and approach to life in general. And so yes, at the end of the day, you come out a better person a sound mind you know you come out a sound mind obviously hopefully or maybe in a, in a sound body as well so yeah so that's what education does makes you a refined person makes you a better person at the end of the day certainly it does that great to me i feel education makes you versatile okay what i meant in the aspect of versatile is it's, it makes you understand your environment easier than an illiterate. If I am to sit down here, let me just use this instance that I'm sitting down here with an illiterate. There are some things that I'll be able to do that the illiterate will be looking at me that what is this person trying to do because he or she cannot read or write. But just because I just went through some manual around me and I know what to do, do this, do that. If I have not gotten that education, I won't know how to read. It will be very difficult for me to understand what I'm to do. And let me, let me pose this challenge. Can there always can there ever be somebody who is illiterate? <laughs> no, let me it's a challenge because while you are talking, some things were going through my mind like, can there ever be an illiterate person? Sure, there is. Is it possible well, to? Well, for, for me, it depends on how you want to look at it. Because, um, you know, illiteracy has got to do with not having knowledge of a particular thing. You know, so it depends. If you have someone who believes or whose whole existence and life has been informal training, informal education, and someone other, some other person whose whole thinking and life is um, formal training and education and all that. You see, they'll have two different ideas. One, the first person now thinking the other person is illiterate because he doesn't have the knowledge that he has. While the, the second person will think the first is illiterate because he doesn't have the knowledge that he also has. So it depends on the perspective and how you want to look at it. Have you heard about the story of, uh, I think, a missionary? Who went to the River Rhine area mm -hmm. and uh, he was telling the boat, this young boy who is going to ride the boat, to take him to the next village. Mm -hmm. So he got into the boat and as they were going, he was telling the boy, Have you done philosophy? Have you done sociology? Have you done theology? Have you done these? All the all the logy and the logy and logy and all that. Mm -hmm. So the boy said that he has not done all of those things. Mm -hmm. So as they were going, so the boat was not shaking, there was a great wave and all that was so shaking and all that so he was asking him have you done swimology <laughs> have you done swimology and the man was so scared he cannot swim mm -hmm. exactly what you were saying exactly that's it, that's it, that's it. you get so sometimes i think okay this is just my personal view i think we underestimate those who do informal education sometimes we say oh because they have not gone to the four walls of the classroom then they are illiterate or they are not uh, refined and things like that however however the point is the point is can there be a person that is just totally illiterate 
Because you see, as you said, you, dem- you demarcated education. You segmented it. Because, okay, they are, you can be knowledgeable in this field and you can be knowledgeable in that field. So, if you are not knowledgeable in that field, are you an illiterate? <laughs> well, 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 I don't know. We're going into definition of terms now. I don't know. <laughs> because, um, yeah, if you say um, someone is uh, illiterate, like I've earlier said, I don't know, is it possible to have a totally illiterate person? I don't think. I think uh, yeah, I think that is the question I'm asking. I don't think. Possible. Can you totally have somebody who is... No, it's, it's not possible. You can't have somebody who is totally illiterate. No, it's not It's not possible. I don't know if they have a contract. You can't have that because... It's not possible. We are all born tabula rasa, like a clean slate. But mm. when we are born, born either into our family or basically the family, and we acquire socialization, mm. that kind of thing. So... Either way, we still learn something, whether directly or indirectly. Even when we don't pass through the four walls of the school, the university or the academic institution, America. we still like gain knowledge from our parents, from our peers, from the social media. So, yeah, one cannot be totally illiterate. That's just it. Okay, one cannot be totally illiterate. Is, it, is that our agreement? Are we agreeing I to that? I will support the motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will support the motion in the sense that there, there is no child. That comes forth to this world that does not have either a guardian or parents. And for you to start growing and then your mom is telling you, say, mommy, you're already going through the process of education. And you start saying that mommy, your name, eventually you go to your people ask you, what's your name? Your mom has been telling you that your name is this. Or she has been calling you that. She has, she's already educating you that this is what your name is. You wake up, you see people outside. Good morning. That good morning you said didn't just come from nowhere. Education you were educated. By yes, yes. You are observing. Either you and... through your peers or the ones that your parents and your guidance actually imparted in you. Yeah. So there is no way. There is no way that you will see one who is completely and totally illiterate. Illiterate. Yes. So we all agree on that. Yeah, we agree on that. <laughs> So there's no fight. <laughs> there's no fight. <laughs> anyway, that's beautiful. That that is really nice. So, uh, for you guys personally, I mean, I'm going to a personal note now. How was your education? How was education for you guys? Rigorous, because normally you get into the university. The first introduction you get in university is stress. You are going about your course registration. You are stressed. Then you now start the the academic part of it is so stressful. Having assignments upon assignments. This lecturer comes and gives you an assignment today. The next day he comes and gives you an assignment. You've not done the previous one. The next day he's giving And it's not the only lecturer. The other lecturers lecturing all oh, giving you assignments. You have to do all these things. Yes. So the rigors of all these, I mean, makes your mind, you know, busy. Yeah, it twists your mind. At some point, you get confused. I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> No, 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 no. So, you get confused. You don't even know what you're doing again at that point. But that is the point where you are beginning to gain refinement. That's where the, uh, the refinement starts. You begin to become refined. So at the time you are now beginning to recompose yourself from that confusion, you are now being able to understand your environment better and be a better person and be a better man at the end of the day. Great. Great. For me, education was fun. <laughs> Why did I say education was fun? Okay, I had no, no, I had no, no. lots of elder ones that ahead was... of me. So me seeing what they are doing, I was so eager to be in their shoes. So uh, like while I was in my primary school, then before they wake up, I'm already awake so that nobody will tell me that you woke up late so we didn't wake you up for you to join us. Like I remember they said I, I had to start going with my elders, like the ones just... I need to be yeah, I, I, my two immediate elder sisters that whenever I see them going out what I do is just to hold them that I want to join them so I started going to school even before I was registered <laughs> because I really want to experience what they experience they are not home they, they go out they return and then I'm just home alone doing nothing it's just as if the whole world is so empty but when I started going I saw yes it's kind of stressful it is stressful but if you program your mind that you just you don't want to face stress but you want to acquire this knowledge, I think it will be much easier for you. I 
if, if I'm to talk about my university days, like I said, I studied theater art, and you know what it means. You have to be awake both day and night, <laughs> jumping up and down, the dancing, the rehearsal. That doesn't mean you will not still attend lectures. You attend lectures like the normal school students and towards your free period while others are in the hostel resting you're there jumping here and there so it's somehow very very stressful you having to go through like the lecturer just like the way he say lecturer comes gives you an assignment to go read 52 books giving just two weeks to read 52 books and summarize it you, you wonder does this my own so yes 52 books yes 52 books you have okay. to read it and summarize in two weeks to submit of which that is just one lecturer out of about nine of them so imagine how you have to like you know i don't know sometimes you go through this book it's just as if it's the book that is reading you you're no longer the one reading the book <laughs> but you just have to do it in order for you not to be left out out of the whole thing education is fun but it's quite stressful as well great Great. Say home. <laughs> For me, eh? <laughs> it was a lot. Like from primary to university level that I just finished. Like, but I had a drive, a motivation, something like okay. Even if I see this thing as like stressful and all, I see how it go. Like, I have to be consistent with what I'm doing, no matter the assignments everything do this one test exams and all i see how to read and all i said okay my father page school fees I, I can't just like let it just slide away like that that was really the and my father was particular uh, particular about us like facing our studies and everything so moving over to the university level that was the hardest <laughs> especially final year okay andre level i entered it was all sweet and rosy we we're getting to know each other and all of that so it's not that at 200, 300, we started to see the real world. Hmm. Like, going to meet lecturers for this, coming back, improv to test, this and that, this and that. Then, final year, projects matter. You know, correct chapter one, correct chapter two, go back again. So, at some point, you might feel like giving up, but you just want to be done with it, like, just finish and come out. So, it was fun because for the fun aspect, I had to like socialize. Like, I joined organizations in school under NFCS. So education, the academic institution is not just about book, book, book. Even inside the academic institution, there are other avenues for different things. I joined organizations in school. So I had to like meet with people. We got to like talk, different things. Then the education also opened my mind to a lot of things. There's some things I didn't know before that I know now and I'm practicalizing it. Actually, with my course, because I studied um, sociology and anthropology. Mm -hmm. So it's making me, it's opening my mind to what sense of society. That's it. Wow, wonderful. Education is sweet. Yeah. Really, really sweet. It is. And uh, I too, I just finished school last year. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> Which other school? But the thing is that uh, I don't admire you guys that studied here in Nigeria uh, because uh, well, we can stress ourselves. You get so when you're talking about stress and all those kind of things, though you see have it, they not that you don't have it. Big books to read and all that. In fact, first of all, you see the books, you are already discouraged. Like what? And all that. And also, also you are studying in another language. For instance, you're studying Italian, or maybe those who are studying in French or, or German and all that, and you're English and speaking in that sense. So sometimes it becomes difficult. But this whole stress of oh, maybe lecturer impromptu test, this, that. No, if I use it, you get right. You can go and meet the lecturer and say, no, this thing I won't collect it to. Like, this is not my result. Let us do it again. Or I want to do my exam again. You can still do that, but I know that in Nigeria you cannot, not, in fact, you, it's impossible. No, the, the law, you can't the law allows you to do that. You know? But in practical, no, you can't, can't do it. You, can't you do want that. to do extension in that case. Yeah, yeah. you go beyond. <laughs> <laughs> if you are supposed to finish in four years, yeah. you finish in eight years, <laughs> you don't know it. Except on the contrary, if it's the lecturer himself or herself that insists that no no they feel there's something wrong with your results you need except, to do it again exactly. mm -hmm. then except it's, that yes. so it's coming from yes. the authority yes. it's coming from the authority yes. Yes. not you being not the one demanding that no 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 i don't no, like no, this no, results no. i need to do something else any experience of that yes i not to me particularly but at least i have one of my course mates who insisted the guy was really 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 a guru like we envy him a lot <laughs> 
so that was this i think that was my second year first semester and then the result came out it was just like this is not what i wrote i know what i wrote i read for this i can't take this no no no. he was just shouting and shouting had to alert the family and told them that no he doesn't mind that truly truly something happened it was another person that was bearing same son name so the result was kind of mixed up Mm, so just that was imagine. how the thing got sorted. <laughs> because the guy was really somebody. sure of what he did. So how would they be giving him C in what he is very sure of mm-hmm. that he can't take that? And eventually they saw that oh, what the main lecturer even gave to him was an A, not even the C. Oh. Yes. He was that sure. Oh great. Later they come blame village people. Don't mind them. <laughs> anyway, anyway, what are your last words to our young people today about uh on the need to take uh, the education seriously, taking from, I mean, taking clues from Don Bosco, uh, who at a very old age began schooling, did not even bother about the fact that he was even older than many other ones that were. He was like the giant in the class, always the giant, because since he started late, so he was like the oldest always. and. He didn't bother, like uh, Rita was saying, that she had a drive. And that was what Sky kept. So he, Don Bosco, had a drive. Don Bosco, from young, was already carrying a lot of people around him, telling them stories, telling them uh, stories about uh, uh, Mother Mary, uh, the Gospels, reciting the Gospels to them. So there was a drive for him to study. So he knew that he needs to be always smart. He needs to always have information to give to these young people from a very young age. So even though when they became Don Bosco, the priest and all that, and going to the prison and all that, he didn't know that that was what he would do, but he was already preparing for it at a very young age. So what would be your last words to our young people today towards education? I would say put your mind into, put your mind into education do not relent, don't give up. Yes, as much as we are saying education is fun, it's still very, very stressful. So when you get to that stressful part, don't give up. Just keep holding on, have that goal, set your mind on something and definitely you will achieve it. Okay, what I would say is, first of all, know your why, your why of doing what you're doing and also be consistent, but consistency is key. And education, you are not just talking about the formal, we're also looking at the informal aspect. It's for you to learn skills, learn skills, like just do something. Even while you're in school, you can still learn a skill and also learn the business side of it. But with the way we are going now, technology has taken over, we need to like do something. So it might not just be the book aspect, the coming out of university aspect, you can also learn skills. There are various skills out there and be consistent with it, have a drive, that's it. So, um, for me, education has its benefits. I mean, whether formal or informal, there are benefits. And simply put, no pain, no gain. If you're going the informal route, definitely you must go through some stress. But it has its benefits. If you're going through the formal route, you certainly will meet your stress there as well. It has its benefits. No pain, no gain. There's always a gain. There's always a benefit. So go through the pain and enjoy the gain. Go through the pain enjoy. and enjoy the Punch gain. <laughs> that was our first line. Now. Yes, we're going to the wrap now. <laughs> anyway, we thank you guys for uh, coming to the studio today to uh, garnish this our program dialogue with Don Bosco with your experiences and uh, your contributions to this particular topic. Uh, we are grateful from Don Bosco Studio, from Don Bosco Online Radio Nigeria Lagos Studio. We are saying thank you to our, our viewers and listeners. We say this is the second episode. Education. Education is very, very important. Education is the key to opportunities. So, read your books, play, pray, and do always what is right.